welcome back to the Beach Bum Bookworm. I am Tiffany. I'm so glad y'all found me again today. My channel is all about cozy mysteries. And this week, I am talking about the new releases for June 2021. I'm so excited. This is the cozy mystery edition of the June 2021 releases. So, as always, let me know which of these that you're interested in, which of these that series that you read already, anticipating anything else that you want to talk about down there's a place to do it on your way down to comment. Don't forget to stop, hit the subscription and the notification bell because that's going to tell you when I put out new videos each and every single week. All right, let's get to this list in three, two, one, go! So the first one I want to talk about is one that is a very popular series. It is the Bake Shop Mystery Series by Ellie Alexander. Number 13 is coming out in June. It's called Mocha, She Wrote. The main character is Jules Capshaw. She is an employee at Family Tort. This takes place in Ashland, Oregon. Summer has ushered in a new season in the charming hamlet of Ashland, Oregon. Tort is bustling with tourists taking in star-drenched shows that the Elizabethan setting out to hike in the surrounding mountains and sampling the bake shop's summer lineup of raspberry lemon tarts, yum, and mint mojito cooled brews. Oh, I don't know about that one. Jules and the team are buzzing with excitement when, when they learn that Andy, Tort's head barista, has been selected to compete in the West Coast Barista Cup. The prestigious competition draws coffee aficionados from up and down the coast to Ashland. The winner will not only claim to be the best in brew, but also be awarded a hefty cash prize. Andy's nervous about his chances, but Jules is confident that her star barista will shine. However, things take a turn when head judge Benson Vargas spits out Andy's first offering, claiming it to be the worst thing to ever touch his lips. And hours later, he is found dead clutching Andy's creamy latte. Suddenly, Tord's favorite barista becomes the number one suspect. Wowzers! I love that series. I'm not caught up in it, but it is so much fun. And Ellie Alexander is a wonderful writer. All of her series are fun. She has a brewery series, too. It's also great. And um, the bookish Bryants did an excellent interview with her. I'll actually link their channel um, so that you can find them and find that interview because it was wonderful. The next one is book number 27 in the Melanie Travis mystery series. It's called Pup Fiction. Right here. It says, when while usually protective, Melanie feels comfortable sending her sons to the Graceland School summer camp for two reasons. The institution is well regarded and proprietor Emily Grace is a trusted friend. But Emily has been acting strange since three rambunctious Dalmatian puppies suddenly appeared on her doorstep. The unusual arrival marks the first of several mysterious happenings at camp, each more intense than the last. Emily's rough streak takes a frightening turn with a discovery in the nearby woods, the body of her estranged ex-husband. As suspicions rush in, proving that Emily didn't murder her biggest mistake will be about as easy as raising prize-winning show dogs. Realizing she's the only one who can prove her friend's innocence and keep the Graceland School from shutting down, Melanie dives into an investigation on the victim's whereabouts leading up to his demise. Ooh, that one sounds so intriguing. I've, this series has been on my TBR for a while. If you're an animal lover, let me know if you've read this and what you think of it. The covers are so cute. The next one is book number 11 in the Witchcraft Mystery Series. This is by Juliet Blackwell. It's called Synchronized Sorcery. It's right here. Strange things are happening in Lily Ivory, San Francisco. First, she finds a vintage mermaid costume, which dates back to the 1939 San Francisco's Treasure Island World's Fair. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And which gives off distinctly peculiar vibrations. Next, she stumbles upon a dead man in the office of her predecessor. And as the community's new leader, she feels compelled to track down the culprit. I... I think I read one book in this series, but I can't promise that. I know that there was a witchcraft series, but I, there's so many that it's hard sometimes not to get them confused, but I think I did. This next book I'm so excited about. I've read the first two. This is number three, and I am loving this series. I gave both books one and two five stars, five big cups of coffee, which 
I'm not a harsh rater, but I'm also not that, that like a just everything five. I I give out a lot of a lot of threes and a lot of fours, which are great ratings. Threes and fours are both awesome to me. But so it takes a little more to get a five, and both books were five. So it is the Hungarian Tea House series. This is by Julia Buckley. The third book is called Death on the Night of Lost Lizards. It's right here. And the covers on these books are so cool. So the main character, and this is Hannah, she works in her family-owned Hungarian tea house. This has a ton of like culture references and talks about Hungarian culture. It is so cool. I really, really recommend this. It says, Hanna Keller is getting ready for a lovely holiday season. When she receives a rare tea set as a birthday gift, she decides to host a tea at her apartment for her closest friends. During the cozy get together, one of Hanna's friends gets word that a murderer is on the loose. Hanna soon learns that the victim was Sander Balog, a professor of Hungarian studies at the local college. With her growing psychic ability, Hanna senses that she is going to be pulled into the investigation of the professor's death somehow. With her sexy boyfriend Eric on the case, Hanna finds a tea house steeped in suspects. I can't wait. Can't wait. The next one is book number 15 in the Bibliophile Mystery Series by Kate Carlisle. It's called Little Black Book. It's right here. Brooklyn and her hunky husband, security expert Derek Stone, have just returned from a delightful trip to Dharma, where the construction of their new home away from home is well underway. When a little black book arrives in the mail from Scotland, the book is a rare British first edition of Rebecca, and there's no return address on the package. The day after the book arrives, Claire Quinn shows up at Brooklyn and Derek's home. Brooklyn met Claire when the two women worked as expert appraisers on the television show This Old Attic. Brooklyn appraised books on the show, and Claire's expertise was in antique British weaponry. But they bonded over their shared love of Gothic novels. Claire reveals that during a recent trip to Scotland, she discovered her beloved aunt was missing and her home had been ransacked. Among her aunt's belongings, Claire found the receipt for the package that wound up with Brooklyn and Derek. Claire believes both her own life and her aunt's are in danger and worries that her past may be coming back to haunt her. But just as Brooklyn and Derek begin to investigate, a man who Claire thinks was following her is found murdered. Oh my gosh! Wow, I have not read any of those, but it's a very popular series. And it's been, it's another one that's been on my TBR for so long. The next book is number two in the Fairy Garden Mystery Series by Daryl Wood Gerber. It's called A Glimmer of a Clue. It's right here. The main character in this is Courtney Kelly. They own a fairy garden store in Carmel, California. I have never read any of the books in the series. I mean, this is number two. So I guess I haven't read the first book in this series. When Courtney's friend Wanda gets into a ponytail pulling wrestling match in public with a nasty local art critic, Courtney stops the fight with the help of a garden hose. <laughs> but Lana Lamar has a talent for escalating things and creating tension, which she succeeds in doing by threatening a lawsuit, getting into yet another scuffle in the midst of an elegant fundraiser, no less, and lobbing insults around little like pickle balls. Next thing Courtney knows, Lana is on the floor stabbed with a decorative letter opener from one of Courtney's fairy gardens. And Wanda is standing by asking, what have I done? But the answer might not be as obvious as it seems, since Wanda is prone to sleepwalking and appears to be in a daze. Could she have risen from her nap and committed murder while unconscious? Or is the guilty party someone else Lana's ticked off like her long-suffering husband? To find out, Courtney will have to dig up some dirt. Oh my gosh, that one sounds intriguing. I had never heard of that series, even like about the first one. So I might look into that if a fairy garden shop sounds pretty cool. The next one is number two in the Book Lovers B&B &B Mystery Series by Victoria Gilbert. I'm excited about this one. I've been waiting on it for a while. It's called Reserve for Murder. It's right here. Meeting your favorite author in the flesh can be the chance of a lifetime, but for one unlucky fan, her plum place in line at the book signing will lead to her untimely demise. Beaufort, North Carolina is home to Chapters Bed and Breakfast, owned and operated by former school teacher Charlotte Reed. This historic 18th century inn draws in voracious readers from far and wide with its lovely curated special events celebrating a host of genres and authors. 
On this sunny July weekend, a visit by one of the biggest names in romantic fantasy attracts throngs of admirers to the quaint coastal village. That's not ideal, as the author retreated to chapters to get away from it all for a while. No matter, she'll appease the, her fans with a tea and talk meet and greet at the B&B, celebrating her best-selling series, starring a devishly dashing, time-traveling pirate. <laughs> That is quite a lot going on. Follow that up with a quick book signing at Bookwaves, the hip indie bookstore across town, and spend the remainder of the weekend in delightful quiet. But when the president of the Reclusive Writers fan club is found dead in the harbor of the Beaufort docks, done in by blunt force blow to the head, it's up to Charlotte, her neighbor Ellen, and Ellen's trusty Yorkshire Terrier to sniff out the killer. I'm looking forward to, to checking out what's going on. The next book is another series that I absolutely love. I'm not 100% caught up, but I oh, I love every book in this series. It is the Haley Powell series. The number 14 that's coming out is called Death of an Italian Chef. It is right here. This is by Lee Hollis. As the food and cocktails columnist for the Island Times, it's up to Haley Powell's job to stay on top of the latest eateries in town. Just in time for the summer tourist season, Chef Romeo, a successful restaurant restauranteur from New York, has opened an establishment called Naturally Romeo's. <laughs> but between his over-the-top temperament and no-holds-barred diet, Chef Romeo may not live through the grand opening. When the chef actually does suffer a minor, a minor heart attack, he ends up sharing a hospital room with Haley's brother, Randy, who's there for gallbladder surgery. Okay. This is getting a little worried. Chef Romeo has tasted Haley's cooking and asked her to take over his restaurant while he's laid up. But this temporary gig may turn permanent after the chef dies from complications. Only thing is, Randy tells a different story. He might have been sedated, but Haley's brother swears he saw someone come into the room and put Romeo out of his misery. Oh, I'm excited about that. I can't wait to get caught up in the series and check that one out. They're fabulous. So the next one is book number two in a series that I've, the first book was so good. It is the Paint and Shine Mystery Series. This is called Draw and Order. It is right here. This is by Cheryl Holland. It just has such a cool premise. For her latest excursion, Miranda is thrilled to take a close-knit group of rock climbers, the risky business adventurers, up the challenging Battleship Rock Trail to paint and sample moonshine. But the outing is cut short when they discover a skeleton near the trailhead. Even more startling, the bones belong to Howard Cable, Miranda's cousin and a former classmate of the risky business group. The sheriff chalks it up to a hiking accident, but Miranda isn't convinced that Howard, an experienced woodsman, died with, within sight of a well-marked trail. So with the help of ranger Austin Morgan, Miranda sets out on her own investigation and discovers that the Rocky Business Group is keeping plenty of secrets. I can't wait. The next one is book number eight in the Madison Knight Mystery Series. It's called Teacher's Threat. It is right here. This is by Diane Valery. It says, Madison Knight just learned that business isn't sexy. She modeled her decorating career on a Doris Day movie, but after losing her company in a legal battle, the local banks are unimpressed with her unique sales angle. Determined to get her MBA, she attends night school until her professor is found dead after an intensely heated lecture. Now, the only degree she can think about is murder in the first. With the while the college recovers, Madison's last hope for a loan is denied. The dean resumes the coursework himself, and Madison can't help, can't help wondering if the curriculum holds the clues to the murder. I have never read anything in that series, but I'm interested in checking that out. It sounds kind of intriguing. So the next one is book number three in the Alaskan Diner Mystery Series. This is by Elizabeth Logan. It is called Murphy's Slaw. It's right here. I read the first one in this series and I absolutely loved it. Charlie Cook loves many things like the Bear Claw Diner, the heated steering wheel of her car, and her orange tabby cat eggs Benedict. Something she has never loved is the state fair. Oh, break my heart, Charlie. So when her best friend Annie Jensen begs her for a fair day, she's reluctant. 
But Annie isn't the only one who wants to wants her to spend a day among fa the farm animals and fry deep fried food. A vendor has been murdered. And Trooper Graham needs his favorite part-time sleuth to dig up the truth, and Charlie is happy to oblige. The case grows personal when Charlie learns the victim is Kelly Carson, whom she and Annie were friends with in high school. If Charlie wants to find justice for Kelly, she and Annie will have to work to weed out the killer. Oh my gosh, I love uh, the setting of a book in Alaska, and this one was so much fun at Diner in Alaska. I don't know, I absolutely loved it. So there's so many more. So what I'm going to do is give the name, the title, the cover, and but I'm not going to read the synopsis just so we can get through quite a few more. So the next one is book number one in a series. And y'all know I love to start a new series, but I've made a commitment and I'm going strong. Two full weeks. <laughs> so this one is called On Skeen of Death. Here is the cover. This is book number one in a riverbank knitting mystery series. This is by Ellie Plefter. I am so excited about, I'm always excited about new series. The next one is a series that I have absolutely come to love. I'm so excited about it. It's book number six. It's called Beauty Expos Are Murder. Yes, it is number six in the Poppy McAllister series. I'm actually going to be, I'm actually currently reading number four. I'll probably be reading number five in the next couple weeks because it's on my series about series list. And then that way I can read number six and I'd be all caught up. So this one is by Libby Klein. I'm so excited. It's a fabulous series. The next one is called The Night Hawks. It is right here. This is number 13 in the Ruth Galloway series by Ellie Griffiths. The next one is called Killing in a Koi Pond. This is number 53, y'all. 53 in the Murder She Wrote series by Miss Jessica Fletcher and Terry Farley Moran. The next one is called The Keepers. It is right here. This is book number two in the Macy Reed Canine Mystery Series. I think that sounds great. This is by Jeffrey B. Burton. And I don't know what Canine Series just sounds really cool. The next one is called Death of an Irish Mummy. It's right here. This is book number three in the Dublin Driver Mystery Series by Katie Murphy. So the next one is called Ruby Red Herring. It is right here. This is the first book and another first in the Avery Ayers Mystery Series by Tracy Gardner. Oh my gosh, another first in a series. And I think this one sounds really cool. It is, the book is called It Takes Two to Mango. <laughs> <laughs> by Carrie Doyle. It is, the name of the series is going to be Trouble in Paradise, the Tropical Island Cozy Mystery Series. I am so looking forward to checking this one out. Next one is called Trouble Down Mexico Way. It is right here. This is book two in the Blanche Murningham Mystery Series by Nancy Now Sullivan. Another number one. This is called Hexing the X. What a great name. This is the first book in the House of Magic series by Susanna Shore. The next one is called The Christmas Fair Killer. Christmas Fair Killer? I know. This is book number three in the Tish Tarragon series by Amy Patricia Mead. The next one is Hazard in the Horoscope right here. This is book number six in the Sunny Meadows Mystery Series by Carrie Lee Townsend. Oh, a number first in a series. It's killing me. This is called Last Words. It is right here. This is the first in the Angie Gomez Murder Mystery Series by Inez Saint. Oh my gosh. The next one is called Catastrophe in the Library right here. This is the third book in the Secret Library Cozy Mystery Series by C.C. James. The Secret Library Cozy Series. That sounds really cool. I'm going to be checking that one out. The next one is called Witches Wear Rainbows End. It is right here. This is number 40 in the Witch P.I. Mystery Series by Adele Abbott. I had never heard of this, but that sounds adorable. The next one I'm so excited about. This is a series I absolutely love. It is fast becoming one of my favorites. The book is called Outdoors, Oars, and Oaths. It's right here. This is number 18 in the Camper and Criminals Cozy Mystery Series by Tanya Kappas, and I'm very excited. The last one I have for you is number three. It's called The Bombay Prince. It is right here. This is the third book in the Purveen Mystery Novel Series. This is by Sujata Massey. 
and it looks super interesting. It's a historical. That was our list for this month. I hope you're looking forward to lots of great releases in June. Don't start any new series. And until next time, may all your future reads be five stars. Bye, everyone.